We use low flow oxygen delivery in hospitals every day. But do you know the difference between all the devices, how to use them and how they work? Well, I'm going to take you through it in this video. Nasal cannula deliver oxygen via prongs up into the nose. The standard prongs come in three sizes, neonatal, paediatric and adult, and the humidified prongs come in five sizes. To work out which size prongs you need to use, they should be roughly half the diameter of the nostril. Nasal cannula can deliver between one and eight litres per minute flow with varying FiO2s. So at one litre per minute, it'll be delivering 24% oxygen and at six litres per minute, it'll be delivering 44% oxygen. If you want flows over four litres per minute, then you're going to want to use humidified prongs. And if you're going to use a flow of less than half a litre per minute, you're going to need a low flow meter to be able to deliver that. There are pros and cons of using nasal cannula. So one of the cons is that when you get flows over over four litres, it can be really irritating to the nostrils, so you can get kind of inflammation and nasal mucosa irritation, and that's why over four litres you should be using humidified nasal cannula. And also it's not really useful for mouth breathers because it's obviously the oxygen is being supplied via the nose. If you're using high flow, then make sure you keep an eye on the PCO2 because you can get normal SATs but with a slowly rising CO2, so watch out for that. But the great thing about nasal cannula is that the patient can eat, they can talk and they're relatively free in the face compared to having a full mask on so it can be a really good option. A Hudson mask is another low flow option. So this is a vented mask. It fits over the mouth and nose, so you need to have a good seal. The airflow for a Hudson mask is controlled by the patient's inspiratory flow, so the oxygen delivery level is going to vary depending on the patient. How much can it deliver? This is a bit tricky because, like we've said, it's gonna vary depending on the patient's inspiratory flow. But as a rough guide, six liters per minute of flow is gonna be around 50% oxygen, and 10 liters of flow is gonna be around 60% oxygen. So if you use too low a flow, so under five litres per minute, you can have a problem with rebreathing. So the patient is breathing back in CO2. Um, this will cause their PCO2 to rise. So it's something to, that you need to be aware of. It also can cause a really dry mouth uh, when you're wearing a Hudson mask. Pros of a Hudson mask are that it can deliver a higher concentration of FiO2 than nasal prongs. But really, if you want to get an FiO2 of over 0.6, you should be using a non-rebreather instead. So this is a mask that's attached to a reservoir bag. The reservoir bag is filled with 100% oxygen and there's a one-way valve so that CO2 can't go into that bag. It's just supplying oxygen and helps deliver an increased oxygen concentration to the patient. So how much can it deliver? Well, you can set it with a flow of up to 15 litres per minute on wall oxygen and that will deliver an FiO2 of two of somewhere between 60 and 80 percent. It's really important that you make sure the bag remains fully inflated during the respiratory cycle. The pros are that a non-rebreather can deliver high volumes of oxygen to your patient and because you've got that valve on the reservoir bag there is no risk of rebreathing. The cons are just like the Hudson mask you really need to get a good seal with the mask for it to be most effective. Next We've got the Venturi mask or the percentage mask. These masks can provide a different percentage of oxygen depending on the flow required so they can deliver between 24% and 60% oxygen. We get different attachments that determine the FiO2 and these are entrainment devices. We use these masks very commonly when we're delivering salbutamol nebulizers. How much can it deliver? Well, that's going to vary. The FiO2 that it delivers is going to vary depending on the attachment that you use. Well, the pros are that there isn't a risk of rebreathing your expired gases because there's such high flow rates. But the cons are that it's not very effective if you're wanting to achieve an FiO2 of over 0.5. So in, the, in these cases, you should be using a non-rebreather rather than a Venturi mask. If you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy our new non-clinical YouTube channel called Bubble Up, which you can see here.